Good afternoon, guys. Um, today we're going to just uh, be moving cows, but, but really while we're moving cows, I'm just going to kind of tell you about um, rotational grazing and what we do here compared to what uh, some farmers do around this area. Um, also tell you why we rotational graze or intensive graze and really the purpose of it. Um, you know, for the longest, you've always heard, especially big cattlemen say, uh, it's impossible to have a cow unless you have an acre per cow or two acres per cow and, and if you're running a big farm and you're you don't have a lot of cross fencing or do some kind of rotational grazing plan um, that is very that, that is true however if you learn to manage your 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 grass and manage your paddocks um, the right way a lot of times you can take that that plan and put a lot more cows in a, in a certain area um, we have about 30 uh, five to 36 acres in front of our house um, and to be honest with you uh, we don't use it uh, you can see all over there it's all pines in front of the house uh, so it's a pine thicket uh, if we needed it uh, you know we could cut it I guess but um, we really don't need it we have five head of cattle um, and we run through six rotational grazing paddocks now I want to I want to walk you through the packs we have because we're gonna be moving them off so you'll see what they've done to one paddock and how we allow it to heal for, for about five to six weeks and then we'll, they'll be back on it. But you see how it'll, it'll grow great. So let's start off with um, kind of where we're gonna move them. So as you look right here, you see it's just piles of grass all through this little paddock. Now this paddock is not big enough for three or four or five cows, probably not even really big enough for two cows to stay full time. But that's not what we do. And when you talk about rotational grazing, the whole purpose of rotational grazing is you're going to take this little paddock and put them in it for a while and then you're going to move it to this one now you see this one is more splotchy it's got some grass but it's really not where it needs to be well this is the paddock that they came out of before we moved them across to the other side of the house so this is the third week of it healing now the grass that's here is is a winter grass that's kind of leaving from here but you'll start seeing uh, you can see some of the clover and you can see some of the the um, really some Bermuda and it's got some old field bahia growing back up in here but it's not ready to put cows back on so what we do is we will let it heal for about another three weeks and then by then this field will really look like that field but it's because we're allowing it to heal you know here here we are we have cows who are who are not tearing the grass up but we're letting them eat the grass and then ultimately they're they're fertilizing the grass because they're using the restroom here and having fresh manure and as it just sits here in the rain falls ends up making a, a great paddock so we'll move them into this paddock now so we've got this one here that's about three weeks from healing they will stay in that paddock there the pretty one for about a week a week and a half however long it takes them to eat it now here's the pros and cons to um, intensive grazing or rotational grazing or whatever you want to call it a lot of that grass there is beautiful grass some of it's winter grass some of it's spring grass coming back through pros when you put them in a place like that they have to eat what what's there meaning they're not going to pick and choose when when you don't have cross fencing or you don't have intense uh, intensive grazing plans and you let cows just go because hey you have enough acreage for the cow uh, it's just like us when we're at a potluck or a buffet we may all of this food may be okay for us to eat ultimately we may pick and choose what we want to eat so what what intensive grazing does is it says not only do you eat the good the good grass and the high protein grass but we're gonna make you eat kind of the junk grass or some of the older grass too uh, if you don't make them eat it they're not gonna eat it so then you have fields growing with a lot more weeds with a lot more mature grasses that are no good for them so what we do is when we put them in this and you'll see on this other side uh, we normally don't split our herd however we have split our herd this last few weeks because we're trying to get one of our cows bred with a bull so we've got a bull with a cow and then the other three are in another panic which I don't even like um, but in this case we are trying to breed her uh, but but what we're gonna do is we'll put them in here and if they they'll eat all this rye grass real quick because it's a winter grass it's beautiful it's got heavy protein but some of this new grass is coming up I see some red clover and and even some junk grass um, they may not want to eat it however if we leave them here uh, they really kind of have to eat it now does that mean no because ultimately they're going to get their nutrients and, uh, and they're going to have hay and things like that but what it does is it makes all the grass maintain one level and that's what we want so once they finish that they'll move to the next now let me kind of get you over here 
if you look in this field over here across the little gravel drive now that that grass right there has a lot of weeds in it it's got some good summer grass growing through it looks like a lot of bahia that's starting to come up as you can see the sprigs now i did not plant that in rye grass whatsoever so it's it's never had winter grass so as these grasses here start dying and they start healing and trying to grow summer grass i've got this paddock over here that has not been touched that's a pretty nice ass paddock but then all behind it if you look on the other side of these this this fence but before you get to the pine we'll have temporary fencing hot wire fencing like poly wire fencing up and then we will do the same plan so we will make another rotation on temporary fencing while all this other ground heals now the reason i say all of that is to say when people tell you you can't have enough you can't have cows on a smaller piece of land you can you just got to learn how many is too many but then you need to learn how to control your grass uh, a wise man once told me that you know when you're a cattle farmer you're actually a grass farmer and that is so true and and look i'm no expert i'm trying to learn as i go but ultimately if you get them on a good paddock rotation and you make them eat the the paddock that they're in ultimately it's going to help them thrive you're not going to have to do a lot of supplement feeding and you can have a few more cow than you thought you could have had now cons um i'm 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 in one of the cons right now or was a few weeks ago with rotational grazing it's got to be perfect weather well there's no such thing as perfect weather um now when uh in south mississippi we had uh about four or five weeks of just just rain i mean it just rained and rained and rained and rained and of course i know it's, it's for a purpose but what it did is the paddock they were in they pretty much destroy just because they were they were slopping around in the mud it hurt the ground because the grass quit growing in those areas that they were on so what what we did was we had to supplement a lot more hay now we we, we have hay and, and we're happy to give them hay however we were giving them a lot more hay because um, the ground was tore up so that paddock now had to heal a lot longer so ultimately then it allowed it so that field was hurt then we had to move them to another field that we kind of had to hold them in for a little bit so they wouldn't tear up any other field so a con to making sure rotational grazing works is weather um, when the natural elements happens you got you to be prepared to either supplement with the hay and have the hay uh, accessible or be willing to put them in a paddock and kind of let it get hurt a little bit until that other one kind of grows back so um it's a learning curve i, I like i said I, I messed up probably one paddock that took me a little bit more time to heal it now i'll show you that paddock because it's, it's fine now but um so elements can hurt it so if you have droughts that, that grass for those paddocks are not going to grow as quick so it's important to have maybe like i had like i was showing you back here those paddocks that have not had rye grass on them and that have not been disturbed at all so say for instance i get a drought or i get major weather and it, instead of tearing up my paddocks that has fertile ground and seed that's already in it i may put them in poly wire out in the, the middle over there just to get them off this land to let it heal so the good thing about intentional grazing is it can it can help your land and make it more fertile however if you abuse that it can really hurt your land because if you leave them too long on this paddock instead of having grass at two or three inches you have dirt because they've ate it all so make sure you're taking care of rotational grazing and making sure they're eating but don't let them eat it to the ground because it won't grow back nearly as fast so uh, again this is where we're moving them all right summer over there that's where we'll move them while these heal one they came out of about two or three weeks ago so you see it's 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 a lot more dirt a lot the grass is not growing heavy in all the areas yet but it will come back but we just got another three weeks of healing so let's go look at the other side if you remember uh my aspiring bull rider that i uh, i brought the bull over and you saw the video of him going crazy um after that we say you know what we may want to figure something out because we have some young calves and also a bull um and with our kids out we want to make sure they're safe and make sure the bull don't get away or either the little calves get away so we built this uh we got a guy that was a good friend of ours build this uh this run basically it's like a true cattle run so it's it, it, it's it's going to be a way that we can get from paddock to paddock and still be in a closed system we have uh one little uh angus who uh i tell you yeah, he's a handful he will not uh listen he's stubborn he's actually a very smart you know bull but he 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 won't listen he won't get close to us so this little walk 
instead of us having to put him in a trailer or chance walking him and all of a sudden something happening to him or he gets in the woods and we got to try to track him down we built this little walkway through so you see look at this how cool it is it's awesome so at least to the other three paddocks and uh so basically we're gonna go look at those and now here's another thing uh i have three dairy cow or actually two dairy cow and a dairy bull uh, when we talk about grazing and we talk about homesteading a lot of times we most homesteaders will have dairy animals well if you're doing paddocks remember dairy animals need a lot more grass and a lot more food and a lot more substance than sometimes even meat uh, cows or meat goats and the reason being is because hey they're giving you a lot of milk which is a lot of their nutrients so the last thing you want to do is drain them so you have to watch your cows too make sure they're getting enough nutrients but if you do a good intense grazing plan it won't matter if they're dairy won't matter if they're beef but it, it will it, they'll do fine okay let me show you this now this is our dairy field so you see we have a stanchion right there now my dairy cow that i'm milking elsa stays in these fields these two paddocks um, just because it makes it easier for us to uh, have her here now most of the time i'll put the cows with her and then she's the only one that kind of stays back but as you can see over here uh, in the far corner right there uh, we've got her with with our bull because again we, we're trying to breed her back uh, she had a calf in january so now as we get closer to april she's starting to come back in heat uh, she could have been bred this last time but <laughs> i don't know i didn't see it so uh, we're putting them back together now let me show these two paddocks this paddock here you see it looks like i've cut grass you see how they've taken it down to hardly nothing still grass not dirt because we don't want dirt showing but you see how they have maintained it now so that means they're ready to move so now this one this field right here will have about a five and a half to six and a half week healing process on that land now i've got rye that, that they've pretty much ate which is a winter grass and fall grass my spring grass is all starting to really come back up in this field so now it will have six weeks of growth and healing um that's awesome so again intense grazing we want to make sure they're eating everything now let's talk about this paddock you see i don't know if you can tell by the video there's some grass that's getting a little thicker that's growing better here i'll show you some let's look you see um you see these little i'm sorry it's windy so excuse the the noise and also the movement of the phone but you see how it's starting to grow right here in the middle this is the dairy field we only bring her in to eat and then we bring the bull in with her when i do milk her but ultimately they were here about two weeks ago too so they were over there three weeks ago over here two weeks ago so you see this one's a little bit behind that one over there um so again this one's still got about four weeks for it so they're going they jump back and forth and it is it, you got to make sure you you remember where they were and make sure you have a good plan because ultimately you don't want to skip a field and all of a sudden you you hurt another field and abuse it because they've been there too long or you hurt another field because of the rain look right here see how dirt that is that's what that's a passage between this gate yeah you know, i told you the bad rain the, the that came for about five weeks this was the field they hurt now as you see it's healing it's healing all next to the barn but right here under me it, it needs some help you see some sprinkly grass starting to grow but they've hurt it now it's, there's nothing we can do it was rain so that's why they actually have not been in here and won't be in here really for another four weeks we'll see how it goes i may even bring a disc in here disc it up lightly um, and put a little extra seed in here just to make sure it's going to thrive uh, we try not to have any kind of fertilizers unless they're they're natural and organic we do have an organic fertilizer we can throw out we just choose not to uh, again because our dairy cows uh, eating this grass and turn around we're milking her so i'd rather not do that if we don't have to but but you see where they're at the grass is down so we're going to go ahead and take them out of this field and we'll take them across to the other side now as I said, I, I really don't like splitting our, our herd. However, since I'm milking her, and also I'm trying to breed her with our bull, um, we've allowed them to stay away from the Angus and the other two jerseys, or the other jersey, excuse me. Um, the other jersey is bred. Uh, she is a, a beautiful little jersey. She's my low-line jersey, and, and hopefully the one we'll start milking by the year end when she calves. But 
she's a beautiful first time heifer and and she's on the other side with the Anguses. but i'm gonna go show you their fields because they're being very choosy they're not eating all the grass they're supposed to be eating so guess what i'm gonna leave them there probably for another at least three to four days to make them eat the grass that they may not want to eat uh and the whole purpose of that is just to make sure they're taken care of because guess what if you leave it what's going to happen is either i'm going to have to bush hog the junk down or either it's going to have hey buddy hey buddy he always wants to rub his head um but if you don't let them eat it you're gonna have mature grass well guess what they want fresh good immature grass to eat they don't want this big thick uh kudzu style weeds and and heavy grass so i'm gonna make them eat it because if they don't that means there's gonna be more weeds over there that means i'm gonna have to get in there with some kind of disc or bush hog and there's no purpose because there's a good grass for them to still eat so let's go look at it right quick all right now we're at the other paddock uh it's to get the uh, where we're at there's our gates they meet up across our roads that's where the two cows are for the paddock they're in right now paddock they were in which is the dairy barn side and then basically on the other side of the house right here is where that uh that little crossover is so we'll go over there and take all the cows from these fields over that crossover uh, and get them to the other field but let me show you this field now you see how they've taken some grass down but not all of it it's kind of patchy now i'm gonna make them stay here for a, a little bit longer because ultimately they need to uh, they need to eat this grass um, and that way when this heals back up this field will look great so this again once a hey girl hey girl so again once this field once we move them completely out of here once these come over to the other side probably in the next three to four days uh, with the bull and with the, the milking cow um, this this field basically will sit for another five and a half to six weeks so it will heal back up with no problem. Now you see the taller grass is some of the winter grass that's left and then there's some weeds in there too. But the shorter grass is where they've already ate but we're already starting to see some spring grass grow back through. So that's another thing about the cons of, of this time of year with paddocks. Um, during mid season, going from spring, uh, going to spring from uh, winter or either coming out of summer, going into fall, kind of going into winter. When you're planting your rye, you gotta make sure they're still on some good summer grass or either they have uh, some hay. Again, coming out of winter, rye is gonna start dying, especially if we have some hot days. And some of that spring grass may not be coming up because we may still have some frosty nights. So you gotta make sure that you're leaving some grass that's untouched or have, making sure you have a good bit of supplement hay. And then that way you're taking care of them while you're going through these seasons as well. So uh, as you see, we've got the the little Anguses, the, the other Angus, I'm not sure where she's at. There she is, way over there. And of course uh the jersey alley um this is the one that we know uh is bred um she is probably three two or three months bred um and she's looking she's a, just a beautiful beautiful jersey she's a low line jersey then we have the two anguses our meat cows and meat bull then we have of course uh, daddy -O is a registered uh miniature jersey and then of course elsa is a full-size jersey all right i hope you've learned a little bit again the pros and cons to uh, rotational grazing we love it it allows us to have cows if we put all these fields together we'd have enough probably for the cows but ultimately you would not be able to control them and they would pick and choose what they wanted to eat so then we'd be wasting a whole lot of grass and, and really uh, it would kind of hurt the ground because ultimately they'd be all over it when you put them in a place even if you use poly wire fencing poly tape fencing uh, wire hot wire fencing or either true barbed wire it's good to make them stay in one spot eat it down and then move it over don't let them abuse the ground but let them eat it and then move them over because ultimately it's going to help your ground stay fertile and keep it going so, i hope this video has been good thank y'all happy homesteading y'all